Well, welcome everybody. It's lovely to see you. Hopefully all the equipment is now working and we can enjoy our worship together. There are a few notices. First of all, tomorrow evening, a men's group. Chris Ruff is uh, speaking. If you haven't heard Chris, he's well worth listening to. Uh, He's talking about uh, a trip that he did with the Scouts to Japan, but no doubt there'll be a lot more and a lot of jokes knowing Chris. So you're very welcome. That's at the Golden Lion tomorrow at 7.30. There are various events going on during the week. On the back page of the notices has details of our Easter services. Uh, Do try and make an effort to to come to at least perhaps one extra service this week. It's lovely to see you at the Easter services. And let me just see if there's anything else. Homer Hub uh, got off to a great start on Wednesday. You're very welcome to join us any Wednesday morning you can. Uh, We still need... uh, two or three more volunteers if that was possible so please do have a word with me after the service or ring the office or something like that and a very warm welcome if you're watching online or whether you're gathered in church it's great to gather for worship this palm sunday the day when we remember jesus riding into jerusalem and we've got some special prayers as we begin welcoming jesus Jesus Christ, ride into our universe. We welcome you here as our family. Jesus Christ, ride on to our planet Earth. We welcome you here as our king. Jesus Christ, ride throughout our nation. We welcome you here as our king. Jesus Christ, ride into Hereford. We welcome you here as our king. Jesus Christ, ride into this church. We welcome you here as our King. Jesus Christ, ride into my life. We welcome you here as our King. King of the universe, King of our nation, King of Hereford, King of this church, my King. We welcome you here as our King. And we're going to stand and sing Make Way. And if during the chorus you want to wave your palm crosses, that would be lovely. So let's stand and sing. Make way, make way for Christ the King in splendor arrives. Fling wide the gates and welcome him into Comes the broken hearts to hear the Christmas decree. The deaf shall hear, the lame shall dance, the blind shall see. Make way, make way for the King of Kings. Make way, make way, and let his kingdom in. And those who mourn with heavy hearts to weep and sigh with laughter, joy, and royal crown, he'll beautify. Make way, make way for the King of Kings. Make way, make way, and let his kingdom in. We Please do take a seat. The time now for us to say sorry to God for the ways in which our lives have not honoured or pleased him. Let us pray. For the times when our love, when our love for you is all words 
and not actions, Lord, forgive us and help us. For the times where we greet you as Lord and King, and yet do not listen to what you say, Lord, forgive us and help us. For the times when we deny you and do not stand up for you, Lord, forgive us and help us. For the times when we shut you out of our lives, Lord, forgive us and help us. Lord, forgive the weakness of our love for you. Fill our hearts afresh with your love, that we might always serve and praise you. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Amen. And if you'd like to hold your palm cross as we say this prayer together. May the palm leaf from which this cross is made remind us of the praise that we should always give to you. And may the cross itself remind us of your amazing love for us. Amen. Well, it's this point in our service that the Sunday clubs go to their groups and we're going to pray for them as they go. Heavenly Father, we pray that whether in church or in the church centre, that we may meet with you, that we may encourage one another and that above all else, you would speak to our hearts and minds in Jesus' name. Amen. And a special prayer for today. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, grant us the faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. Now we're going to have our reading from God's word. The reading comes from Luke 19, 36 to 47. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, Rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it, and he said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. And the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Then he entered the temple area and began driving out those who were selling. It is written, he said to them, my house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May we pray. Gracious God, please meet with us this morning. We need you in our lives. We need the comfort of your love, but we also need your instruction and guidance. Amen. When you look at the world and the state it's in, what do you do? What do you think? How? do you feel? At the moment it's pretty heavy isn't it? I've spoken to some people who are strong in their faith and they said it's been a real blow 
to their faith what's been happening in Ukraine. It's difficult sometimes. How do you cope? Do you just try and forget it? Do you shut out the news? How do you cope? Do you pour yourself a stiff whiskey? Do you pick up a romantic novel? Do you turn on the TV? Or do you just shrug your shoulders and say, oh, well, nothing I can do about it? Or do you just feel depressed about the whole thing? Well, today we can learn something about how God reacts to the world and the state it's in. Let me set the scene. Jesus has been riding towards Jerusalem on a donkey, riding into the city as the servant king. His followers are cheering wildly, but some of the Pharisees who are in the crowd are objecting. We don't want you as our king. We don't accept you as the Messiah. Tell your followers to be quiet. And as Jesus himself was well aware, that was only the tip of the opposition. And so what in this passage is Jesus' reaction to a people that don't seem to want to know him? A generation that, perhaps like our generation, rejects God's rule in their lives. And the first thing we should notice about Jesus is his courage. John's Gospel tells us that the religious leaders, both the priests and the very religious Pharisees, had already decided to kill Jesus. They were keeping a lookout for him. They were wondering if Jesus would even dare to come to Jerusalem. They assumed if he did, he'd creep in secretly. They'd given people orders to be on the lookout for him and to report back. Well, there was no great danger of anyone missing Jesus. It was perhaps the easiest spying mission ever to find out where Jesus was. What courage. He comes boldly to Jerusalem. But he comes not as some western gunman facing his high noon. He comes not to fight. He comes humbly. He comes in peace, riding on a donkey. The second thing to notice about Jesus' reaction in this passage is that he weeps as he rides over the hills surrounding Jerusalem and comes into view of the city, he weeps. The people have rejected him and Jesus doesn't feel sorry for himself. Instead, he weeps for them. He's come to bring them peace, wholeness of life. If only they had turned to him. And when God looks at our world, he weeps because we've chosen a path that leads to great unhappiness instead of the fullness of life he longs for us to enjoy. If Jesus' first reaction is to show courage and his second is to weep, his third is to speak of God's judgment. He says that the result of their rejection of him is going to be the destruction of the city And great suffering. And sadly within a generation that came true. Jerusalem was totally crushed by the Romans. Does this sound very harsh? I don't think so. If the Jews would not live under God's rule and protection. And wanted to go it alone. Then so be it. Jesus saw where all their political manoeuvrings and intrigue would lead. He'd given them every opportunity to repent, and yet they'd ended by rejecting him. So now, they would face the consequences of going it alone. And the consequences were that they got crushed by the Romans. So Jesus says judgment will come. And we need to wake up to this. We're in danger of having a rather rosy, cosy picture of Jesus. There's someone in the congregation who often says, you don't preach enough about judgment. Well, I hope you're listening this morning. I'm preaching about judgment. Jesus says, the consequences of failing to turn to me are 
judgment. And when God looks at our world, our community, our church, and us individually, yes, he weeps with compassion. But he also thinks there will come a time when if they do not repent, then judgment may be the last chance to bring them to their senses. So far we've seen courage, compassion and judgment in the way Jesus reacts to the state of our world. But there's another thing in the passage we had read. We see Jesus' anger. When eventually he comes inside the city walls, he visits the temple. He, he visits the area which should have been a, a place of prayer for those who are not Jews. Instead, it's been turned into a market with some pretty dubious trading practices going on. You see, every male Jew had to pay a temple tax each year. And that tax was half a shekel. It was about equal to two days' pay for an ordinary working man. Now, in Israel, there were many currencies in circulation. But this half shekel temple tax had to be paid either in the half shekels of the temple or in Galilean shekels cut in two. The money changers charged about 15% just to change into the correct currency or to split a Galilean shekel into a half shekel, a 15% marker. The money changers made a huge profit, as did those who sold the animals for sacrifice. Now, you could buy your sacrificial animal from outside the temple for a tenth of the price at the local Audi, but then your animal had to be inspected by the temple inspectors. It had to be without spot or blemish. And not many animals made it through their test. And so it was safer to buy the animals from the official stall at the temple, even though they were ten times more expensive. It was a rip-off. The poor were being cynically exploited as they went about the duties of their faith. And the money was going mainly to the high priests. The temple area was being used as a lucrative market. That area outside the main temple that was meant to be a place of prayer for the Gentiles, that was where the dodgy dealings were going on. No wonder Jesus was angry. And he turns over the tables of the sellers and drives them out of the temple. When God sees our world and the things that go on in it, I'm glad to say he's angry. And his anger doesn't lead him to go off in a sulk or to pick on some innocent bystander. God's anger leads him to try to put right injustice. Jesus doesn't stand in the temple saying to the disciples, tut, 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 they are naughty, aren't they? He doesn't kick out at a passing pigeon because he's upset. He doesn't just ignore what's happening. Instead, Jesus takes action to put things right. Now, as we talk about how God reacts to the world and the state it's in, I hope you realise this is also a sermon about how you and I should react because you and I are to copy Jesus, to follow his example. So let's take courage first. Jesus didn't shy away from problems. He went to meet them. And he went with a view to help, not to sort people out, but to help. And yet, how often do we simply run away from difficult problems or try and pretend they don't exist? Or if we do get to such a state that we decide to take action, how often do we explode onto the scene, determined to sort people out? We need courage to go and try and serve. We, we may fail. Some situations are incredibly difficult. Unfair ways of doing things at work or in our world can be deeply ingrained. People have been ignored or badly treated who need help. They're often not easy to help. Or when people have taken up an opposing camps and are intent on conflict, 
It can be really hard, and sometimes they don't want to hear a peacemaker. Let's remember, many people did not respond positively to what Jesus did. But we should follow his courage in getting involved. What about compassion? Does compassion describe the way you react to the world around you? Does it cause you distress to see people ignoring Jesus, missing out on the life he brings? Should be a real spur to sharing our faith. People around us are missing out on the most important thing in life. You and I have good news to share. But perhaps if some of us are brutally honest, we'd be saying, well, I'm sorry to say, but I don't really see it like that. I've never seen it as desperately sad that people don't know Jesus. I've never seen it as urgent to share my faith with them. Well, if you're honest enough to admit that, then I hope you can see what that says about your faith. You need to ask, why, is, why does the Christian message only seem mildly good news to me? Why am I not more excited about its truths? What about judgment? When you look at the world around you, the lives of people in this area, can you see that they and perhaps you are on a course for judgment if there's no turning to God? If you can, then that should encourage your compassion and your sense of urgency in sharing your faith. And last week, we think about anger, anger that leads to action to put things right. Often we say it's a mark of young people that they want to change the world. Well, I hope that's not true. As I grow older, I hope I don't lose the determination, the fire to want to change the world. It should be the mark of every Christian wanting to see their lives change, but also to see the world change. Don't you want to make a difference before the time comes for you to meet your Lord in heaven? As someone once said, all it takes for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. What are you and I doing to put the world right? Or have you stopped feeling angry at injustice and unfairness? Have you given up the fight? Or let Jesus stir you into action? In our television and social media age, we're bombarded by news that displays in great detail the injustices and results of sin in our world. Some of the stories coming out of Ukraine are desperately sad. And it's not just about the Russians, though, when they put weapons that will cause destruction into cuddly toys that will go to children, you feel, what is going on? But also when people in the West try and entice vulnerable young Ukrainian women into their home to exploit them, you think, how low is humanity in its sinfulness? And I say that not because I want to separate myself from those sinful people, but because I know in my own heart I'm capable of great sinfulness. The problem is that we see so much that we become used to it. And the worst of all, we see so much and do so little that we stop feeling and we become used to doing nothing about it. God no longer has Jesus' hands to turn over the temples, sorry, turn over the tables in the temple. He now wants to your, use your hands and my hands to put things right. Obviously, we can't take up every good cause, but far, far better to do something rather than nothing. Amen. If we want to be inspired in this, we won't be inspired by looking into our own hearts, but by worshipping Jesus and knowing that he lives in us and can change us.
Let's stand and sing together. King of kings, majesty, God of heaven, living in me. declare our faith together in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high, and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Would you please sit for our prayers of intercession. Let's pray. As we remember Jesus going into Jerusalem on a colt and being hailed by the people, waving palms and shouting, blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. And yet a few days later, many of those same people were shouting, crucify him, crucify him. They, like many today, didn't understand why Jesus was willing to give up his life on the cross, knowing the suffering he would have to endure before rising again on the third day. Dear Lord Jesus, 
Thank you for the sacrifice you made on our behalf, and that you are indeed the risen Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We praise and worship you and look forward to the day when you will return to rule this world. We long for your peace and justice to come. And especially at this time, we lift up Ukraine and pray that you will bring an end to the cruel tyranny being inflicted on the people living in those bombed out towns and villages. May your Holy Spirit brood over that country, overcoming evil intent by President Putin and his supporters, through your mighty power and authority. Gracious Father, have mercy on all who are suffering, especially the civilians caught up in the conflict, many of whom have been tortured and killed without cause. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the aid and help being given to refugees in neighbouring countries and pray that women, children and old people who are still stuck in eastern Ukraine without enough food, water and medical supplies will have safe passage out of their bomb towns. Help them, Lord, as they come to terms with losing family members, homes and everything they have. Please bring your justice to all who have committed war crimes against humanity and have mercy on the soldiers as they fight to save their country. Thank you for President Zelensky's brave leadership and we pray that he might see your hand at work in bringing the war to the end. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Thank you, Father, for the many answers to prayer and for the way you brought us through the COVID pandemic. As we think back over the past two years of lockdowns and difficult times for many, we give thanks for the vaccination program and that life is beginning to get back to normal. But we also pray that people will still be careful as numbers of cases are increasing. Especially we pray for NHS staff, emergency services and teachers who are struggling because of colleagues having to self-isolate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for our church family and for all the ways you unite us in purpose through worship and the various groups meeting each week. Please bless the children's teaching groups and pray that you will make the Easter message a reality to them in their lives. So that it won't be just coming to church to see their friends, but rather wanting a deeper understanding of your love towards them and their families. Bless Stephen, Erin, Jane and Liz in all they do within our fellowship. And inspire us with your Holy Spirit to live for you each day and to share the good news of Jesus with those who come into contact with, whether through a conversation or by helping someone in a practical way. Please prompt us to use every opportunity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for anyone known to us who is ill or who has been bereaved or is going through a difficult time. Especially, we pray for your healing touch to be on Annette Harris Smith and David Warner during their treatments at this time. There are others known to us, so we lift up their names to you in our hearts and pray that your love will surround and strengthen them in their situations.
Thank you, Lord, for your healing power and that you are a God of miracles. Amen. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one as our Saviour taught us, so we pray slowly, thinking about every word. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Maggie. Would you please stand for the peace? We are the body of Christ in the one spirit. We were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And let's wish God's peace to those around us. And now we're going to sing meekness and majesty.
pray. <coughs> the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. And now we give you thanks because for our sins, he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, become the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the heights. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. Accept through him our great high priest, this is our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we take these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us coming. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sins. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy, but at your word I come. As we've been doing recently, I invite you to come up to the front to receive a wafer of bread and for you to take that back to your seats and then we'll all eat the bread together. So if you'd like to come and receive in faith. <coughs>
Please don't worry if you've already eaten your bread three times. I've done that myself uh, since I introduced the system, even though I should know what's going on. So please don't feel, don't worry at all if you've done that already. So the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, preserve your body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. We join together in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and the Son of Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We stand to sing, ride on, ride on in majesty. give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. And I do hope that many of you will be able to join us over in the church centre for a couple. <laughs>